Hi, and welcome to module five of lecture five. Now we're gonna, having gone through and discussed what an integral is, um, both definite and indefinite types, and seen how to connect them, we're gonna start the process of learning how to actually compute them. So we've actually gone a little bit along that line already. If you recall, the definition of a definite integral was this. I already said that if you had, say, a C in the middle of A and B, you could split it up like this. And to show that, we just looked at the fact that you just have two different areas, and you add them together to get the full area. Well, we can also write this in terms of the fundamental theorem of calculus in the previous module. And note that if you flip the right-hand side and have FA first, um, if you flip the bounds over here, so you go in reverse, right? you should get, by the same fundamental theorem of calculus, this, which is minus this, the negative of that. So this thing is going to be negative times A to B. So if you flip the bounds, you get you put a negative sign in front of the entire integral. Um, so that that works as well. Similarly, if the bounds are the same and you go nowhere, you get f a minus f a, and that's zero. So the integral of a single around the single point across a single point is just zero. A single point has no actual area. Um, that's most of the things with bounds. In all these examples, the bounds have been numbers, but they don't have to be. So for instance, I could integrate this is a common form for the CDF of a function, the cumulative distribution function. You learn this more when we do probability distributions in the next part of the class. All that's necessary for bounds is that the, the things in the bounds are not the same variable as the thing you're integrating over. So if this is t, this should not, there should be no t in either of those two bounds. x is fine though, you can have different variables in there. So that's how you work with bounds. Um, again, they could be fancier functions. You could have uh, you know, x squared minus one and x cubed e to the x. That's all fine. You can do whatever you want with the bounds as long as the things in the bounds are not the same variable as the one you're integrating over. Okay. So that's stuff with bounds. Let's move on now to functions. We're going to deal with all the functions we dealt with in derivatives all at the same time because we've already done the hard work when computing these functional derivatives. And the integrals of them are just the inverses of the derivatives. So all we're going to do is figure out the general rules for first polynomials, second, which come up more, most often, second exponentials, and then third, I'll show you the logarithm just for completeness, but that really didn't come up very often at all. Okay. So let's start with polynomials, in particular powers. Okay. Call that the power rule for differentiation was dx to the n dx equals n x to the n minus 1. Now, when we integrate this, we want to get back to the original function again, x to the n. How do we do that? Well, we could add 1 to the exponent and divide by n, right? So if we added one to the exponent and divided by n, we end up back at x to the n. Now it's gonna be true for any n, so let's try that rule in general. Um, so let's take our a function x to the n, and let's add one to the exponent. Now we, we divided by n, n over here, I'm looking at the top here, n, is one more than the old exponent and equal. So if we have n over here, we want to divide by one more than that old exponent. So that ends up being one over n plus one. So we're going to postulate the integral, the indefinite integral or the nth derivative of x to the n dx is going to equal one over n plus one x to the n plus one plus c, don't forget the c, this is the indefinite integral, or antiderivative. We can check this, if we differentiate, we pull down the n plus one, that cancels with the 
1 over n plus 1, just yielding 1, and the exponent decreases by 1, leaving x to the n. So if we differentiate the integral, we end up back again with x to the n. Remember, the, the derivative of c is a 0. So this is, in fact, the antiderivative, and this is, in fact, the rule for almost all powers, for integrating almost all powers. There is one and only one exception here, which is when n equals negative 1. Now, what happens when n equals negative 1? When n is negative 1, we have 1 over x, right? Um, sorry, when n equals negative 1, we want to move up to 1 to get to x to the 0. The thing is, the derivative of x to the 0 is not 1 over x, it's actually 0. So let me go through that a little slower again. We want the derivative of the integral to equal um, the function back again, right? So let's say we're dealing with a function uh, x to the minus 1. If the integral for this followed this rule, then we would add 1, we get 1 over 0, x to the 0. That clearly can't be right. right? First of all, it's infinite in front. Second of all, we know that x to the 0 is 1, and the derivative of 1 is 0. So this clearly can't work. So what can we do about this? Well, there's going to be one exception to this rule. And that exception is that for n equals negative 1 only, the derivative of x to the negative 1 dx is going to equal the natural log of x plus c. Two things to note about this. One, there's an absolute value around the x to the natural log of x. The reason for that is the natural log is not defined for x um, less than 0, or x equals 0 on this infinity. 2, negative infinity in this case. 2, um, we can check this. And we see is that the derivative of the natural log was 1 over x. That's x to the negative 1. So this actually does return what we want. So to reiterate, or summarize, I guess, the integral of x to the n dx equals 1 over n plus 1, x to the n plus 1, plus c for n not equal to negative 1, and the integral of x to the n dx equals natural log of the absolute value of x plus c for n equals negative 1. So it's a little more confusing than the derivative, but for almost anything, the top rule is going to work. So for instance, if we have x cubed dx, we get 1 quarter x to the fourth plus c. If we have x to the negative 7, we add 1 to the exponent. That makes negative 6. We pull down that same new exponent, um, 1 over that, get negative 1 sixth x to the, x to the negative 6th plus c. And we can also use fractions. So the integral of the square root of x is the same as the integral of x to the 1 half dx, which is going to be, so 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. 1 over 3 halves is 2 thirds. So it's 2 thirds out front, x to the 3 halves dx. Sorry, not dx, plus c. So you can do any any power you want from this. And as we'll see in the next module, the integral is also linear, so you can make any polynomial you, you want with this rule. Just the only thing to keep in mind is n equals negative 1. When you have integral of 1 over x, it's a special case. But other than that, they all follow the same rule, which is the inverse rule from the derivative. And if you forget the rule from the, the integral, but you do remember the derivative power rule, which is a little more intuitive, you can just pull down something and subtract something. And it's also used more often. You can always get the integral rule again by just guessing, basically, what thing, when differentiated, produces the function again. Okay. So that's the, that's the um, power rule for integration. The other two rules are, in some sense, simpler. The exponential rule, what's that? Well, if you recall, the derivative of an exponential is an exponential back again. So we might guess that the integral does nothing as well. If I differentiate that, I get e to the x, which is the function back again. So the integral is also the exponential back again. The integral of an exponential 
is the exponential back again. That's true for e to the x. If you have an a to the x, it's a list slightly more complicated. But recall that the derivative of a to the x dx is going to equal um, natural log of a times a to the x. So when I differentiate a to the x, I'm going to pull down a natural log of a to the x. So just like when we had to divide by n plus 1 to get rid of the thing we pulled down, we're going to have to divide by natural log of a to get rid of the thing we pulled down. So this is going to be equal to 1 over the natural log of a, a to the x plus c. And we differentiate, we'll pull down a natural log of a. It'll cancel with the 1 over natural log of a and leave us just with a to the x back again. So this, again, is how you integrate exponentials. No examples here because we can't do any examples here as of yet without more rules, so we're leaving it just like that. So there's this. Okay. Um, now this is the one you're going to deal with most often by far. For completeness, in case you happen to have a logarithm and utility function, we'll do the logarithm, but only the one with um, only the regular natural log. So what's the integral of the natural log of x? This is trickier because we don't really know what, when differentiated, produces a natural log. So we have a little fancier about it. Um, here I'm just going to guess something and show you how it works. Here's my guess. Now that may seem kind of arbitrary, right? But let's see how it works. If you recall, the derivative of the natural log is equal to 1 over x. So let's differentiate this thing up here. Do that, we need the product rule, the derivative, and the linear rule, too. So let's work at that. It's good practice. Well, let's see. Let's work on one term at a time. The derivative of x is 1. So this term is going to give you a negative 1. The derivative of a constant is 0, so this term gives you a 0. So this thing is going to equal the derivative of x log x dx minus 1. To do this thing, to do the first term, you need the product rule. We call it the product rule says that the derivative of fg equals f prime g plus fg prime. If you forgot that, go back to the previous lecture and check it out. So the derivative of x is 1. So that so this whole thing is going to be 1 times natural log of x is the first term plus x times the derivative of the log. The derivative of the log is 1 over x, so that's plus x over x. Keep the minus 1. This is plus. This term is plus 1, so it cancels with this, and we're left with the natural log of x. So lo and behold, our kind of odd guess actually produces the function back again when differentiated, and therefore it is the antiderivative or indefinite integral. If you want to, as an exercise, you can go through and do the same thing for a general log base a, but People generally don't use log base a's in game theory, and that's the only scenario you're actually going to actually you're actually going to be integrating a log, most likely. So um, this will work. This will this will work sufficiently. People use the natural log for most every time they have logs anyway. And that's it. You've now really quickly gone through all the same functions we did at, for differentiation, but in terms of integration, which we could do because the integral again is just the opposite of the derivative. So that covers the function rules. The next three modules, we're going to learn analogs to the rules that let us manipulate more complicated derivatives. We're going to learn integral analogs to those rules. The first will be the linear rule, which will be relatively straightforward. The other two, substitution and by parts, will be less straightforward. It will take more, um, more effort and sort of more investment here. But the first one will be relatively clear and will get us a lot of the way to doing a lot of integrals. Thank you very much. I'm going to see you in the next module.